It's your girl Young Africana back at it again with another video and today I'll be showing you guys how I got this slime green hair. You know I have to represent for March because I feel like the month March is like the color green. I don't know it gives green vibes you know March Madness you get me. So yes you guys I did this beautiful slime green. This is my first time ever doing slime green and I'm super super happy with how this hair came out y'all. She's looking good or whatever, you feel me? But yes, if you guys want to see how I achieved this look, this color, and this install, then keep on watching. But before you go ahead and continue on to the next segment, I do want you guys to go ahead and subscribe to your girl. Comment some green hearts if y'all are feeling this look. Ooh, that was a lot. Mm. Like I said, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you are feeling this look. Go ahead and click that bell right next to the subscribe button so you guys get the drop before the drop even drop you get me and if you don't understand if you don't get me you go ahead and click that bell so you get notified of when I post my videos okay but yes you guys go ahead and do that come your green hearts if y'all feeling this already because baby I look good okay but if you guys want to see how I achieve this look then keep on watching Alright you guys, so first things first, I'm going to go into my Kiss Colors Temptation Semi-Permanent Dye and I'm using the color Limelight and we're going to do the watercolor method. I have a bucket of warm to hot water and I'm just taking some water inside of the bottle just so I could get all the dye. And overall I used two and a half bottles of the Lime Light. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour that in the water and then I'm going to go ahead and just mix it around and make sure that there's no dye flying around and then I'm just going to go ahead and just dip the hair. I did not protect the knots on this um, hair. I tried a new knot method of me trying to dye my knots like the color of my skin using a semi-permanent. It worked out pretty well so I'm going to try it a couple of more times just to make sure it's efficient and I'll show you guys how I, you know, bleach my knots I guess or tint my knots. So now I'm just going to go ahead and dip in the hair and this hair is from my vendor that I am, I've been using this for years but I am testing it out just to make sure that um, I will want to use this uh, for my future wig collection which is in the future you guys so. <laughs> But yeah, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and just dip the water. As you guys can see, the color did take the first time a little bit, but we're going to have to add a little bit more. And the coloring here is a little bit off. Um, it's not as dull looking in real life. I think it was just the um, lighting on my camera or just like my lighting period. But yeah, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and just keep on dipping the hair and putting the hair in and out, mixing the dye. And I'm going to go... I'm gonna work in intervals as well too. I just use a bottle and then I dip the hair and then I use another bottle just so I could like gradually build up the pigmentation in the hair just so I make sure I have the perfect color. Now I went ahead and just rinsed it out and then blow dried it and then this is how it looks you guys. So right now what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and part my part. We're doing a nice sleek middle part today y'all i was feeling you know um share um i don't know <laughs> kim k it was giving that you guys but right now what i'm gonna go ahead and do is use my care care wax stick and then i'm gonna go ahead and use my hot comb i'm just gonna press down my hair and this is a trick that i do um just to make sure whenever i'm doing like straight hair to make sure that it is completely straight so i'm gonna go in sections with the front tool and use my care care wax stick and then go in with my hot comb and you just want to make sure you go in sections don't make the hair too too greasy i just apply just a little bit um just on the roots by itself too and i use the hot comb just so when i put on the wig it is nice and flat you guys if you're doing a middle part why would it not be flat unless you're doing curls but if you're doing a nice straight metal part do not have it bumpy looking y'all that's not a good look so this is just my little trick that i do to make sure that my uh, middle parts is middle parting okay 
now on to the back what i like to do is i like to take like a horizontal row of hair in the frontal and i'm just gonna go ahead and use my care care wax stick just to place it in place and then my hot comb just so we could cover up that last track right next to the frontal so everything looks nice and seamless And this is how your wig should be looking and I just went ahead and flat ironed it off camera because you guys have seen me flat iron a bunch of times but now on to the install I'm gonna go ahead and use my foundation shade and my foundation brush and I'm just gonna apply that on the back side of the lace or the underneath part of the lace just so I could tint the lace and now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my slits I like to work in sections when it comes to my frontals just so when I'm pulling it it's nice and even and I get a more accurate um, placing when I place my frontal so now I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it back and I'm using my 91% alcohol and I'm just rubbing down my skin just to remove any excess oils or dirt that I have on my skin and this is very imperative if you are doing the install y'all now I'll be using my Erica J watermelon hold me down skin guard and I'm just gonna go ahead and just spray that around my hairline and then I'm going I'm gonna go in with the Erica J hold me down watermelon adhesive and I'm gonna apply that around the perimeter of my hairline and I use two layers of this and this hair is stuck, you guys. I don't like using too many layers because I don't keep my wigs in for long and I only wear them once. So yeah, you guys. But now I'm going to go ahead and just use the tail part of my rat tail comb and I'm just going to smear that glue. I like to use the um, rat tail comb a little bit more than just like, you know, a regular wooden stick just because I feel like, I don't know, you just get better results. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do that and I'm gonna let this layer dry before I apply the next layer Now that my second and last layer is dry, I'm going to go ahead and just place my front tool down. And we're just going to place it and position it in front of the glue. We're not going to place it right directly on the glue. Um, just so we can save error and to save time of, you know, cleanup if you have it behind the glue. Because that is a no-go. So again, apply your lace in front of the glue.
Now I'm just gently using my hands, even though you're not supposed to use your hands, you're supposed to use a comb, but I'm just gently using it because I feel like it was just more efficient at the time just to press down that lace into the glue. And now I'm using my eyebrow razor just to cut the lace off. You want to make sure you're cutting as close as possible to the hairline. And then I'm just using some extra glue and the um, tip of my rat tail comb just to detail. I like to call this part detailing. And I'm just going to go ahead and just fill in the spots that I missed. And I'm just using my hand just to lift up the lace so I see exactly where I missed that. And I use the same amount of layers, which is two layers, for when I'm detailing. And now I'm just using the teeth of my comb just to press down that lace. And I did learn this little technique for myself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the middle part of my rat tail comb and kind of just, you know, use that as like a roller to roll the lace into the glue. Um, I feel like it low-key makes a little difference, you know? You know, I was trying stuff, you know? But now I'm going to go ahead and work on one of the sides. And again, you just want to make sure you're cutting in a jagged motion and as close to the hairline as possible because you do not want a lacy install. Like, lacy installs are not it, you guys. And again with the detailing, I'm going to go in and just, you know, uh, lay down the spots that I missed. And yeah. Now that that is done, I went ahead and carved out my baby hairs. Today we are doing just four baby hairs, so it's two on each side of the middle part. I just kind of wanted to keep it natural looking because, um, I mean, even though this hair isn't really natural looking, well, the most natural looking, but besides the color and stuff, I definitely do. I don't really like doing too many baby hairs, especially when it comes to colored hair. Um... The baby hairs definitely have grown on me because before I just never did baby hairs on colored hair period But um, you know, it's growing on me. It's growing on me So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and do four baby hairs and right now what I'm doing is I'm using my hot comb Just to press down and train those baby hairs downwards Okay, we want to make sure that it's trained downwards It needs to be tamed it needs to be retained and it, it needs to lay down relax Relax, okay <laughs> Then I'll be taking my Gossipy Free Spray and I'm going to spray that all around the perimeter of my hairline. This is going to help further the melt. Alright, you guys can't skip this. can't do this and expect your lace to be lay, mommy. That's not going to work, okay? You need your guys to be. Because your lace got to be laid, alright? So yeah, after that's done, I'm going to go ahead and use this melt belt that I got from Nesclusive. You guys should check her out. I definitely did review her hair um, with the pink, the coral pink with the hot pink uh, 
roots it was really good i loved it but um yeah so i used her melt belt and let that sit for about 15 minutes and as you guys can see the lace is further melted all right now we're gonna go ahead and cut them baby hairs so i'm using my eyebrow razor just to cut off my baby hairs you want to cut your baby hairs about like an inch long and my rule of thumb when i'm cutting my tendril baby hairs is i'm cutting right below the earlobe so that's how long your baby hairs should be i mean to each its own you everybody has their own preference but for the most part what helps me is cutting right below the earlobe but now I'm going to go ahead and use my Nairobi setting lotion and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that on the hairline and the baby hairs so when I'm swooping them bangs, it swoop easily without no mess and no stress, okay? And I'm, just, I'm using my rat tail comb to form my baby hairs. And you just want to keep on playing around with it, forming it, and using a light hand as well while you're forming it so your lace does not lift. Now I'm going to go in with a silk wrap and then I use the melt belt on top of it as well but I didn't catch that on camera. And I'm just going to go ahead and just tie that around my hair and let that dry for about like 20 to like 30 minutes you guys or until it's dry because every hair has a different dry time. And as you can see I just keep on seeing me with bits and more makeup each time. But boom, oh my gosh, we looking late or whatever. Now I did the rest of my makeup off camera and now on to um, fixing up this hair. I like to go back in with my hot comb and I like pressing out my hairline after I applied that mousse just so that it's nice and you know just it looks cleaner and I'm combing out my baby hairs with my baby hair comb because y'all know I don't like no crunchy baby hairs that's not the wave y'all but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and comb my baby hairs out and then I'm gonna go ahead and use my spritz around my hairline just so that all the flyaways could um, stay down and these are pretty much the finished results, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe to your girl if you have not. I hope you guys enjoyed my slime green March Madness type look. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later!